Some say, are you a leftist? Are you a Mawadi? Are you a Hindu? Are you a Buddhist? <laughs> are you a socialist? My name is Tenzin Sundu. I'm a Tibetan writer and activist based here in Dharamshala. I'm 47 years old. I try to represent the voice of Tibetans inside Tibet. I will not buy. I will not sell. I will not sell. And I will not use. And I will not use. Products made in China. Products made in China. We are not giving up. We live in hope. Hope that one day we will be able to go back to our own country. His Holiness Dalai Lama's birthday is usually a big celebration in his resident city of Dharamshala. But after COVID-19, it's been different. As the virus rages on, the world has found itself in different forms of lockdowns or restrictions. I'm a documentary filmmaker and I also found myself quarantined in this remote hill city of North India. A city which is very special to many Tibetans. Tibet has been occupied by China since the 1950s and more than two-thirds of Tibetans who are living in exile globally have found refuge in India. My hometown Dharamshala is the de facto capital of Tibetans living in exile. It is the headquarter of the Central Tibetan Administration and is home to their spiritual leader, the 14th Dalai Lama. This is where I met Tenzin, an activist in exile. What is your definition <clears throat> of a nation? A country situated on the highest plateau in the world where there is nine months of winter harsh climate and cut off from the rest of the world. So in that isolation we lived for all these hundreds, thousands of years until the Chinese invasion in 1949 where we lost the independence of our country. And even today, Tibet continues to be under Chinese occupation for 70 years. So we seem to be living a life which has been severed from the past and the present is in a tumultuous wave and the future looks bleak. And yet we are not giving up. We live in hope. Hope that one day we will be able to go back to our own country. So you have been in prison. You have had travel bans put on you several times. Um, how has the corona-induced quarantine been different for you than all those times? Whether I am in lockdown or lock up, I work every day for the freedom of Tibet. Tenzin has been arrested 16 times for his protests and for the violation of restrictions on movement of foreigners in India. During the Chinese Premier's visit in 2005, Sundu had famously breached security to wave a free Tibet flag at the Indian Institute of Science in Bengaluru. Now it's common for him to get detained when a Chinese leader or head of state visits. He's become a recognizable face in the Tibetan independence movement. To really free our country, you must have the imagination first. Once you have the memory of the past and imagination of the future, the present is taken care of by your action. When I was born, my mother said, you are a refugee. Our tent on the roadside smoked in the snow. On your forehead, between your eyebrows, there is an R embossed, my teacher said. The R on my forehead, between my English and Hindi. The Tibetan tongue reads, Rangzin. Freedom means Rangzin. Hello. 
China is not just another country. They call themselves Tsinghua, which means central state. They believe essentially that China is in the center of the world and everybody is in the periphery. This is the next one. You still have five minutes or something, yeah? Let's uh, go across to Rose Kai. Thank you for speaking with us. I hope you can hear me. She's a Tiananmen Square massacre survivor. China now is the world's second largest economy. I think largely it's because of the appeasement from Western governments and kowtowing and courtship from uh, multinationals around the world. Love and freedom are the only solution in the world. Where is freedom of speech in China? Where is freedom of press in China? This is a demonic practice China is practicing today. People of China are suffering today. I make people ask a question. I intimidate them by looking this way with a red band. Some say, are you a leftist? Are you a Mawadi? Are you a Hindu? Are you a Buddhist? <laughs> are you a socialist? A refugee essentially is someone who had to leave home, come to a new country, and is not able to settle down. Want to go home, go back, but is unable to. The person will be killed. I will not buy. I will not sell. I will not sell. And I will not use. I will not use products made in China. Products made in China. Tibetans, world's sympathy stock, serene monks and bubbly traditionalists, one lakh and several thousand odd, nicely mixed, steeped into various assimilating cultural hegemonies. My registration certificate I renew with a salam, a foreigner born in India. Can you explain the life of a refugee to someone who has the privilege of having a home country? This means that I am born in India and registered to be living in India and this is valid for one year. Although I'm born in India, it says you are a foreigner living in India. Instead of saying citizenship India, it says place of origin Tibet. So it's diplomatically worded to say that I have some link with Tibet because my parents came from Tibet, but it falls short of recognizing Tibet as a country and Tibetan as a nationality. Because I'm a subject of Tibetan government exam, I can vote in the Tibetan elections, Tibetan parliamentary and presidential elections once in five years. So with these three papers, I can travel and live as a Tibetan refugee living in India. I live in two pairs of shirts, two pairs of jeans. I try not to consume any new products. The life that I have chosen to live is not a sacrifice. It's my first call, it's my first choice. Live a simple life. Simple life with no physical material luxury. Because physical material luxury is time consuming. My income comes from the sales of this book. I sell it for 50 rupees. I print like 4,000 copies uh, in a year. And then I travel and sell this, uh, read poetry, tell stories. I get myself invited to colleges and universities and so many different places. We were told that China had invaded Tibet and the world doesn't know. And that's such a tragedy. For me, the role of writing is most importantly to 
understand the gravity and profoundness of the situation where you are. At the age of 22, Tenzin secretly went to Tibet for the first time. Three months later, he was deported to India. From Ladakh, Tibet is just a gaze away. They said from that black knoll at Dumse, it's Tibet. For the first time, I saw my country. I sniffed the soil, scratched the ground, listened to the dry wind and wild old cranes. Idealizing Bhagat Singh, I went across with the plan that I'll live among the nomads and slowly start a revolution. Um, I almost died there, having no water, no one to meet, no food. And then I got arrested by a Tibetan nomad who was working for the Chinese. I was interrogated, beaten, tortured. And after all these three months of imprisonment, finally I was thrown out by the Chinese. You feel so insignificant. If, if they had killed me in a certain corner of the jail, no one would have known. Push back. They'll take you up to the border and point, your, point their guns at you and say, go back, don't come back. They handed over to me little belongings that I had. I had about 5,000 rupees or something. So this, is the fe this fellow, he has a gun here, you can actually see. Um, he was taking me around in Ngari town. So there cannot be a bigger humiliation than, than this. Uh, a native has been thrown out by the, by the occupying force. After that, I came here to Dharamshala. I met uh, my sister, many of my uh, relatives. And then I found that they were so angry with me because I didn't tell them that I was going into Tibet. See, it's written here. In exasperation at the border, if they question my freedom, I'll curse for the word on their lips. And if they devoid me of this freedom, I'll stab a dagger in their eyes through their specks. Look at this, how angry I must have been. So this is uh, close to me, my memory of Tibet. The world knows too well. And everybody is playing their own politics. And we have not been able to do that. People around the world are scared of China. They think China is going to have some kind of repercussions on the rest of the world. And that is completely wrong. If we keep fearing the monster, the monster will threaten and bully you more. Modi like digital strike gets ready to ban Chinese social media. During the pandemic year, the Sino-Indian relations became strained because of border skirmishes, and Tibetan leaders have been demanding that the topic of freedom of Tibet be made a high priority. In June 2020, as part of the ongoing military standoff between China and India, reports emerged of the deaths of 20 Indian and 43 Chinese soldiers. I also believe with the majority of Indians that there is no military solution to the Galwan Valley massacre. Tenzin recently marched around 500 kilometers on foot from Dharamshala to Delhi to protest India's recognition of One China policy. Idealism will never come to an end. This is my firmest belief. It's like a religion. People today are much more informed. They are much more equipped uh, using technology. Today I see a lot of younger generation Tibetans who are like 15, 20 or even 30 years younger to me. They also are bearing this idealism that my life is not just about money and material resources or my own power and position. It's about the welfare of a much larger number of people and especially your country, your society, your community. Yeah.